Hello everyone and welcome back to the Face It CSGO League. We're at stage three. I'm your host Richard Lewis. You can see it down there. That's excellent work, Reese. Well done. And joining me, uh, or rather I'm joining them, it's their house, uh, is uh, James Bardolf and DDK. Uh, they've been doing a marathon of casting. I uh, don't know how you guys do it. Uh, I can only express my admiration. And we're about to do it straight into another game. So this is going to be Titan versus Hellraisers. Take it away, gentlemen. Oh, well, we have the knife round, James. <coughs> yeah. Been a while since we saw one of these. Indeed. Speaking of knives, if you did win a knife this week, then you should claim it. Otherwise, I'll give it to somebody else. Like Mubot, for example. So, Titan lost the previous game to the Poles. And that means that they are no longer able to qualify for LAN. Her is using Simple as a sub. We have heard talks of uh, Schneider playing for them, but today it will be Simple. And last time we saw Simple playing for Hellraisers on Overpass, it was some pretty insane stuff. He was playing B-bomb site on the CT side. Uh, he was doing all kinds of shenanigans, such as smoking off Monster Tunnel and then walking through the smoke. I don't remember the team it was against, but it was pretty savage, that. Yeah, the ironically, <laughs> ironically, Simple left. Hellraiser is because he, he said that Oscar's too much of a solo player, which is quite a humorous thing coming from Simple Chase. Um, either way, we're going to see Steeko. I really like Steeko as a player, and uh, so far he's, he's doing a pretty good job there on A-Long. He's going to even the situation up with a few, well, with three kills actually. And uh, Shox has managed to find himself a USP. Have to see whether or not the bomb can find its way to a bomb site here because the two on one is going to go the way of Hellraisers, leaving Existence once again in a position where he has to clutch for his team. In it's interesting that Existence keeps getting left in these positions uh, across the last game as well. He was always alone at the end. And this is going to be a tough one against two USBs, there's even two flashes, a kit. There's a lot for Hel everything is going in the way of Hellraisers for this uh, situation. <coughs> the only question is can Existence plant the bomb? Hellraisers playing for the W. Here, going to stick together so they can trade kill worst case scenario as opposed to trying to stop the plant splitting up one to one. Definitely sensible in a round where at the, yeah, these ranges no one has a distinct advantage. No helmets for anyone and there we go. In fact they will split up after all and El Angel will get taken down one tap by existence. So now the bomb's going to go down and Coochie's in a one versus one. He's seen existence's position. Might have a bit of shadow play there, but Existence has moved so long. Creature's got a Diffuse Kit though, but he's going to fake it first. See how far away Existence is. The Wide Peak will be do, will do the job there for Existence, so Hellraisers will possibly lament not sticking together in that scenario. Yeah, so finally winning one of those clutches, and he's going to go AK straight away, which is uh, interesting that Existence has been putting himself in the position <coughs> to... Uh, to carry the weight for his team in many situations when he's got the likes of Shock, Scream and uh, RPK on the team, which is, is uh, cool to see. And uh, Simple picking up the Deagle. It's always fun to watch Simple with a Deagle. And there are a lot of guys coming his way, so maybe he can make one for the HLTV front page. One D coming out. Can he find a two D? No, that's going to be that. But Angel has done some significant damage to the Titan side now. Two-man advantage for Hellraisers. And there are far too many angles. Surely they can't do this. Existence is finally left alone again. Versus three. He's got an AK though. They haven't picked up any significant guns. But as time continues, there will be too many angles for him to cover. Taken down by Stiko. Distraction run by Kucha. Hellraisers get back. Well, they get two uh, winning ways to get on the scoreboard there. And they've picked up two AKs for their uh, spoils. I mean, uh, Existence is a great player, but I hope we don't see a trend where he is, he is too often left alone at the end because on, the, on that team, you want it to be RPK or Shox, I would say. Out of the, all the players on the team, it should be RPK or Shox. The two, uh, two best clutch players, two, two most, uh, I, was, I guess, two most consistent riflers as well for the team. And Shox is also very versatile with any, any weapons. So interesting uh, that they get into these spots and they have to force by straight back. It's the standard... Uh, tug of war between the two teams. However, at the moment, Hellraisers are ready to pull Titan into the muds. And uh, looking uh, pretty good here for Titan, actually. Scream is going to take both entries. So, ooh, the lineup, though. Lots of damage done. Look at the health on these players, but Future doesn't get a frag. There are four heavily tagged on Long. He's done so much work for his team, but 
Angel and Simple need to get frags about being traded. That's a very good start. Angel with a two-man spray down. Simple coming in now as well. Angel finding a third. Reload coming in. And again, it's just existence alone with the bomb. And now only four HP taken down as well. So humongous work done at the end there uh, towards long. Simple's gone from a CS God. He's upgraded to a genius, Dan. He's joined Mensa, maybe. Well, I guess I should, start up, I should apply as well then, James. We've got... Uh, Kucho with wow. five assists there. I mean, he, he did so much damage in that round. <clears throat> We've got Titan, who's uh, managed to pick himself up, pick themselves up uh, another force by off of the off of the bomb plant. So it's it's quite smart to go for this because again, they want to keep the pressure on our razors. They know that if they give them a free round, that things will go poorly. And they did make three kills happen in the previous round, so they can keep that pressure on. But uh, screaming of the AK is on a Galil, which is on an auto shotgun, and he's already getting tagged down. So. It's going to be hard, but they'll make the same approach. But this time, instead of Kucha, you got the reliable Oscar in position. This is a position that we saw um, Sean Gares often playing. And he never got more than one frag in this position. However, Oscar's got two. And some information for his team. Scream just tapping down, just trying to pre-fire any hair raises players who are looking to add to the tally there. Attained by Oscar, but that'll be that. Now the genius is uh, coming in with a flank. Scream goes down, and that's the bomb as well. He's going to try and smoke off the choke point. And he's going to push along with it, and down goes Smith. So, good work done so far. Four versus one. Shocks with a surprise entry there. Going to be a bit of bonus money with the auto shotgun. I'm going to pick up the AK now. But that's going to be that. Kucha to take him down. We'll see if he chooses to collect the 47. Indeed, he will. How has already looked like... Uh if, if all the players are playing well on Heroesis, it'll be hard to see... I mean, Titan definitely have a, a low percentage to win this match. Because uh, Simple, when he gets going on the short position on the B-bomb site, is is so ridiculous. And you got Oscar and, and the Sneaku as well as the 1-2 uh, towards uh, the A position to try to cripple the Titan side as well. Although the pistol will get a frag, there is a quick refrag with the grenade. And uh, some good tags of ball. Boom. Wow, that is a strong kill. And that's a big deal because that is going to mean that the pace can be very fast. And that doesn't allow Harry's as much chance to rotate. Indeed, it doesn't. So, Kucha still holding down the A site here. <coughs> He's going to dance around the bomb site and clear out as many people as he can too so far. He needs to reload soon. Gonna have to switch out for a pistol. Smith's waiting. Smith's finding another headshot. So, two versus two now. And there's been... Big damage done to the Hellraiser's economy. They've got a man advantage now, and again, it's existence alone. Without the bomb, so Hellraiser's can rotate, but uh, there's still a lot of time here for existence. They have to be paranoid as to where existence is coming from. He just fired off a shot, so the answer is there. Angel just going to charge around the corner and put an end to this. Good CT start from Hellraiser's, actually. 4-1 to one already. Got a bit of money in the bank, as do Titan, who will go for the buy now. Yeah, it's going to be uh, pretty tough <clears throat> for, uh, well, more t it's going to be harder for Hellraisers now uh, as Titan can get the, the AK engagements, but uh, they need to take some good map control. I'd like to see them taking sewers away from uh, Hellraisers and just try to take as much as they can because uh, Hellraisers are going to want to try to get map control as well. We can see the battle for sewers here and it's going to go the way of Titan. So that's a really big play. It's going to put Hellraisers a lot of uh, impetus on them to try to equalize and get some pushes going. But Oscar gets caught out. Somehow he actually made a frag there. That's kind of nuts. Found the headshot just at the last possible second. And uh, Simple's dead. That should surely spell the end. Spell doom for Hellraisers in this round. They can easily get a bomb plant on the B-bomb site. And Stiko is... He's even being harassed here by existence. <laughs> this, that left and right looks kind of weird. But there we go. Existence very keen to get a kill on the board here in this round. All right, his teammates are just going to chill out. I do wonder where that smoke went of his. Maybe it was over to Optimus. He's keeping Stiko busy. Stiko with a shadow advantage, and now his teammates can advance and get the bomb down. Stiko can come from one of three places, upper, lower, or from short. That's Nade. He's going to do a bit of damage to Scream. So Stiko's got himself a one versus one here versus uh, RPK. Scream coming in just at the right time though. RPK becoming the bait. Scream becoming the line. It's a credit to Titan to uh, use their three versus one advantage to sacrifice existence. Uh, so he could potentially win the kill uh, in, uh, in A or he could guarantee 
that they know where the CT is. So it was a smart play from Titan, so just trying to rush three together and maybe getting sprayed down by the highly skilled Stiko. And uh, yeah, I mean, definitely, if you if you haven't seen Stiko much much of him before, you should really watch out for this guy. Many flashes in the long area. Stiko hiding behind a tree. Molotov coming in. But we won't see what will become of him. He's still in the position, actually, so maybe he hasn't been Molotov'd off, but Titan have moved elsewhere. Going now towards the B-bomb site via connector, it seems. Hellraisers will not have this information because they don't have anybody towards the toilets, having lost Oscar. RPK going down as well, but the short plays will now see it. Trade's coming in. Three versus two here. Angel getting that CZ kill, able to reload before Shox comes in round the back, but he is sandwiched now between two T's, pushing through the Molotov, while Tipple comes in for the flank, taking Existence's head off. Bomb in his favour, Shox to go down as well. Hellraisers bring it to 5-2. Yeah, and they get reset, that sucks, but uh, with this kind of money, you'd expect them to just, just pretty much flat out eco, I'd, I'd say. I think uh, because they just got reset back down to fourteen hundred dollars, it would be very, it wouldn't be very wise to try to force it because then it would take essentially almost two ecos again to get a good buy-in. So, I'm gonna go a bit halfway with it and uh, let's see if they can get something done. Monster push from them. Players in position from Hellraisers. Smith's moving in, even though he's completely blind, making it across the site. His team, I don't think he's been spotted yet, but he's not going to be able to do anything for his team who are now coming in. They're going to line up and that's going to be a UMP spray. Money being made by Angel. That gun will pay for itself. Existence now. Last man standing. Symbols taken down. Easy hold for Hellraisers. Now Hellraisers could do something pretty uh, pretty sneaky here if they were to get some like good aggression on. Maybe get uh, some good picking going from party. But interestingly, Titan, instead of... Because uh, the previous round, they did actually buy quite a lot and they could have actually got, gone Kevlar AK here but they wouldn't have had any utility so I'm a little bit surprised that we're going to see uh, two pistol armor plays instead of just you know maybe a, bit, a little bit lighter last round and then just a couple extra nades here and the AK but hey Shox is in with the fast headshot indeed he is Angel has left the building rather swiftly Shox to pick up the M4 most of the players do have armor here, but look at the flank coming in for Hellraisers. They've pushed all the way down long, but is it going to pay off for them? Oscar needs to run distraction here from the site while this flank comes in. I believe it's uh, simple, in fact. And, oh no, Stiko, who's going to get the flank. And the bomb's been lost for Titan. Now, how much damage can they do? RPK's shadow will give his position away. An existence... Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing there, but um, he will be unable to get the frag with Stiegel as well. Another round on the board for Hellraisers, a strong CT half so far. Titan uh, will need to get a few rounds in a row to break the CT economy here. So this Titan in dangerous waters at the moment in this match. At least this round they have uh, utility, but again, if this is the kind of uh, position where Hellraisers, if they get a fast aggressive pick, it just deep stabilizes the T's pretty heavily. They did go forwards. You can get some information like that. And they're going to hear all the stepping. The flames and the spray is going to do the job. Simple picking up two kills. The bomb is discovered as well. And this is an awful round for Titan to lose in such a fashion. But also good cognizance from, from Hellraiser is to have forward presence to pick off players before they can get onto kind of execute territory in front of a bomb site. But Smith's creeping around the side. Oh, he's been spotted now by Angel. And there's no way he's going to take him down. So just scream left. Can he get the one on three? Well, not with his knife. King for the headshots there, but uh, I think he was... Unfortunately for him, Angel, Angel just peeked at the wrong time. Made things a little bit awkward. Another round on the board for Hellraisers. And again, the cash is just continuing to build on the CT side. And this is uh, one of the more important maps to kill the CT economy. Because, again, you can get the 13-2 halves, which we may be headed to. With Titan on the eco again. Yeah, it's... Looking pretty poor for them indeed. And, uh, you know, Hellraisers are really strong with Oscar and Stiko, so it's no surprise, and they got Simple in the mix as well. But uh, the Deeks, or DD, has worked out in the Maybe it can again. Got Stiko, a good flash coming in. He's going to pick up one player. He gets the spot on the bomb. So Hellraisers know what's going on. They've done already what needs to be done to win this round. It's just a matter of closing. There you go. In comes the close. 9-2. Looking like a fast one so far from Hellraisers. They're having a very decisive half. Yeah, Titan might not have an opportunity to offer anything on the CT half the way this is going. 
So, the struggle continues. Smith down to the P90 now. I don't recall seeing Smiths on the P90 before. So we'll see what he uh, has to offer. Interesting he's gone for the P90 as opposed to the Scout, although this is not really the best map for a Scout, in fairness. And, well, here he comes with the P90, and there he goes with the M4 from Kucha. He's going to take down Shocks as well after he takes down Angel. So simple flash around the Monster Tunnel. If he sprays down, he could find a lot of people here. He gets flashed again after getting the kill onto RPK. So traded by Scream. There's a CT in the water. That's Kucha. He's going to take down Scream. So it's existence again versus three. With the bomb in control of the CT. So we'll see if he can do any damage. No, Stiko just going to come out and wreck him straight in the face. 10 to 2. Are we headed to 13 2, Dan? It pretty much looks like that. <laughs> the money is outrageous as well for Hellraisers. And Titan. They have not found a single solution in any of these rounds. And it's not just not finding a solution for an approach on the play. It's also being able to connect some just some bullets. Because sometimes, you know, the strategy is not going to work out. But if you can just hit the shots. And that's why having like, really high skill players can really count. Envious are a prime example of that. What is going on here? Um, ooh, this could be nice. Future gets won by Suez, but instantly traded by Strox. So it's like that's not actually going to pay off. Maybe Titan have... They're fast. Maybe they have an opening here. Strox is going to... Smoke the upper area. Simple is still in position. He's going to find the first kill. Second one almost. Titan are very low on health though. Indeed, and uh, now they're all dead then. 11 to 2. This is looking like a fast one. Two rounds going into the CT sides. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the crazy things is that Angel's always... He always performs for Hellraisers. He's really consistent, and especially with pistols. Uh, Stiko and Oscar obviously have been doing fantastic stuff. They haven't been fragging that much this this time, but Kutra and Simple have been doing a very, very good job in their positions when they've been attacked. So uh, from an individual standpoint, Hellraisers look great. Um, Titan, though, not really looking great in that sense. So I, I would even say on the T side, it would only get worse for Titan. <laughs> so that's not a very good, good projection if that's going to be the case. Ooh, perfectly timed. Well, actually, I'm not sure whose flashbang that was. Maybe a CT flash, which was stopping the peak there, unfortunately. Man advantage for Hellraiser's RPK just down to a CZ. In this situation, Shock's just kind of creep keep trying to creep through. I'm not sure if Simple spotted him. Obviously not. That's the angle he took jumping onto the barrels there. So four versus four, and there's a player on the site for the T's. Soon to be dispatched by Kucha. RPK on the A site now, so Hellraiser's with some weird positions, but Stika gonna come in basically from the back. Can't get the two-man spray down. Two versus two now, and we've got players falling all over the place. Angel Kucha, heavily tagged, existence, last man, 12 HP. And the bomb at the feet of Kucha, already with two kills. He's got an incendiary as well, so he can actually let the bomb go, and uh, considering existence is so low, he could just toss an incendiary on this plant spot as soon as he hears, hears the time that uh, or his exist punching in the numbers. But he's looking for a full flank, and that's, that is surely going to catch existence completely off guard, although he's taking this very, very, very slow. Kuch is moving faster as well because he's got the pistol out. Oh, is he starting to run? Boom. Well played by Kuch there. That's really smart. And 12-2 uh, is the score. This is looking... Look, this, there was two players on 16k there. Oh, God. That's not a good look for Titan. Th they've had such an awful time. It's hard not to feel... Feel sorry for for them in, in that sense that they just they just cannot get themselves going. Double up to finish things off here. Oscar and Simple. Simple hungry for the frags. Release the hounds. Ooh, scream. He's gonna miss a shot and uh, retreat. Simple just gotta cover his teammates angle. Look at the speaking of angles that speaking of angles. Angel angles. Yeah, it's uh, Titan who want to execute, but they don't have... They've got two smokes, two, one Molotov left, and they've already lost the player. Oh, this is uh, pretty awful. It's hard to see them have a lot of opportunity in here. Nice wow. snap on Oscar. He's very, very good with that AWP. And uh, there's another AW AWP where that came from on Simple, but we get a couple tap downs here. Maybe there is a chance after all. RPK is going to move in. He, oh, I guess a snap onto Angel as well. Showing Scream how it's done perhaps, as existence is left in a one and two again. Um, something to say about RPK a bit later, but existence last man standing. We'll see if he can do anything on this occasion, just trying to pre-fire up against two orcs. He's got a fair amount of time as well, considering the positions here. There we go, takes down Oscar. Knows where the other player was. 
and there aren't many places for Simple to come from, but again, it is Simple. And you definitely want to be careful picking him. That's a nice final tap by Existence, finally clutching around for his team, 12 to 3. RPK, um, going back to him, you know, he came out of retirement. It's quite interesting to see how long it's taken him to get back to this kind of nasty level that he used to be in in Source. So maybe that's something we can consider time scale wise, um, looking at other teams going forward as well. Yeah, he's been really, really good lately. Very consistent. At the Major, he was the standout as well for Titan. And uh, he's, he's such a good player. Because like, he, knows, he knows the spots when to spray, when to tap, and he's incredibly amazing with both of them. And uh, it feels like he has an edge on Scream in that sense. Sometimes it almost feels a little bit disappointing with Scream because there's spots where it feels like he's trying to force his style, maybe you know, putting the, the circle piece in the, in the triangle in inserts, potentially, in some spots. But uh, either way, Hellraiser's are going to go with the monster push. Fast push, they get a fast win. Rush B is the command, and it is uh, fairly even at the moment. RPK and Oscar finding frags. RPK and Kuchu finding frags. Kuchu getting another one, taking the lead now. We'll see if the bomb can go down. Simple's going for a, for a massive flank, actually, all the way through the A site. So how long can Hellraiders hold on for here? They don't need to go for the plant anytime soon, but they need to be careful about the CTs enroaching on their map control. Indeed, that's what's happening. Simple coming down the stairs now. The existence, existence finds himself in the water. Simple won't be needed. Just going for a tour around the map while uh, Oscar and Kucha do the business. Yeah, it's pretty. It's the, the, the prognosis is so bad, and it's like you, it's terminal, Dan. Yes, yeah, it, it really is. And you can't really say, oh, you know, Titan should have done this or they should have done that, because again, it's like if, if there's such a disparity in just in individual skill, then what are you going to do? There's not there's no solution there from a strategical perspective if you're just getting wrecked when it comes to the engagements. You've got to be able to hit the shots, and Hellraisers are just phenomenal right now. Everybody's delivering it when they need to deliver, and Angels on his uh, his on on his Mac 10 as he is uh, so so want to do. So Smith will be spotted there, which is really nice because uh, that's going to give a bit more security to Angel. That said, he's going to get popped in the head by Suez. So the push is coming in from Hellraisers towards A long and Titan have two digs and Shock's picked up the Mac 10, but he's on half health. Can they do it? This would be very MacGyver style if they were able to do it with this. Oh, I used to love MacGyver. So Titan with the Deagles. Not working out so far, but if they're only a man down, I say only shocks of Mac Tony. He's done some good damage actually. Stiko hasn't got much left, but Simple and Kucha will be the street sweepers, clearing things up. Two rounds away from a 16-3 oh, Hellraisers. Very strong showing so far from them. Titan still with mere pistols, shocks with the scouts. This is not the best map for a scout either, so this is a desperate situation. Yeah, and uh, there's. Uh, there's any number of options for Hellraisers too, they can just pretty much push anything. I mean, again, they're just overpowering Titan so far. And their systematic pushes of the toilets area has been quite good. And they've gone hyper passive apart from Angel, who's uh, rocking the ump. And this is what Angel likes to do though, is he's, uh, Hellraisers putting Angel in a, in a position, or Angel's putting himself in a position, as he tends to call, um, where he can basically just run the gauntlet. And he's good at doing that. He's got the ump, he's already got a kill. He spotted another couple of players. He's getting so much info. And he's got a teammate pushing monster now too. Well, the bomb is actually headed over towards B bomb site. Shock's finding the frag with the scout, but is it too little too late for the Titan side? As they have conceded the upper bomb site, which is where the bomb is going to go down. We'll see if it's an open plant or the standard one behind the boxes. Shock's looking for what was that? Yeah, that's two pretty sick shots so far. And, uh, but is it going to mean anything? We've got uh, just Scream and Shocks remaining with that bomb ticking away. They've got two players in bank. How have, have Hellraisers and Kucha. In bank. Kucha's uh, by toilet, so he's going to have a good vantage point. Even if his teammates uh, fail, Kucha will for sure clutch the round in this position. It's very strong, and they will get it done. So, Oh, actually, it was planted behind the container. So actually, if they would have killed the guys on bank, Kucha would have been screwed. <laughs> so anyway, um, looks like a very fast one here today between these two sides and uh, this is somewhat of a bit, a bit of a prediction, but expected I guess after the uh, previous previous map, previous showing it's versus Pro and uh, Titan with a very horrible buy here, they've been they've been to the jumble sale. Yeah and they've, they've stolen the car Dan but the boxes were full of old socks with holes in and ladies dresses. So there's not much to show for this round. Existent Smiths just with pistol socks again on the scout, but uh, the overwhelming numbers of the Hellraiser side should be an insurmountable task for the CTs. Down goes Shocks, down goes Existent. Smiths now to do what he can. 
but he can't do a whole lot. 16 to 3, one of the fastest games I think we've seen in the Face It League stage yeah, 3. I think if, so. If not the fastest. That was, uh, well. Very kind of you, Reese. Keep me off camera while I just struggle with my wires again. There's. I don't even know. He's a pro. What to say about that? I mean, Hellraiser is looking super strong. Titan, whenever in the game. You have to worry for Titan's future. Excellent. I'm here. I don't feel uh, for, for Titan. I, I barely had time to boil the kettle there. That's unacceptable. I thought there was going to be a bit more to it than that. Uh, and uh, it should have been. This is um, a Hellraiser's team that haven't even got a, a designated fifth yet. They brought Simple back, who we all know the history he's had uh, with the team. I thought there would have been cause for friction, but instead it was like a well-oiled machine and they just uh, you know, rolled over Titan. Um, interesting fact, before we get into picking the bones out of that one, I'm reliably informed I was doing the math. Uh, and I double-checked it with Reese, who obviously is very competent and knows what he's doing. Uh, apparently, Hellraisers can still mathematically qualify for the land finals, but they need to beat Virtus Pro twice tomorrow, as well as winning the game that they won today. Fnatic need to lose their game, and I think there's some other permutation. So it's all nice and complicated. But basically, yes. The, the, the bottom line is if, uh, if they keep winning and Virtus Pro lose... A game along one ge one more game along with Fnatic, they can get in there. They can sneak in. Interesting time. So they ha I have actually got a future to play for here. Well, I don't know how many bones are in this match, Richard. Because no, not really a lot. No, <laughs> <laughs> but let, let's try. I think they were uh, removed in advance. Uh, let, let's try since we are going to have some time. Uh, again, um, I mean, the the problems were pretty evident with Titan. Again, it was Smiths that wasn't really um, pulling his weight. And look, they've had problems on overpass. Uh, they've avoided it for, for, for quite a long period of time, apart from a very brief period where I think Existence thought you could maybe uh, make it a new map in their repertoire. So I don't even know what they were doing playing Hellraisers on that map, who have a pretty decent history on it. It was but Hellraisers home pick, so Titan yeah. would have vetoed two other maps, and Hellraisers would have picked overpass from the remaining five. And we have seen them with Simple on overpass playing very strong before, oh, yeah. so it's... It's th the result isn't really a surprise. The nature of the result, the score, etc. Again, I think it's more about the names on the Titan side. Like you see yeah. the names of, of the players in, and, and you, you expect strength, but there's something else there for the time being. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. And, you know, I, I think this pairing of Shocks and Smiths, they've come with sort of, you know, such a pedigree. And Shocks is basically endorsing Smiths being in the top level team. I was going to ask you about this, actually, mm. because. Uh, I know you know Shox quite well, and it does mm -hmm. seem like, I, I mean, because from what I understand, Shox just wants to play with the guys that he's friends with, or yes. some, some, something along those lines, essentially. And Smith is one of those, mm -hmm. but is he going to have to change his attitudes here? Because Shox, Smith is the, one of the clear issues. Shox says he, he never will. That yeah. it, is, it is better to win with friends, even if it means that you eventually don't win as much. Never say never. Yeah, I mean, never say never, but... But I, uh, but this is where this is where the performance of Smith comes in. He's been, you know, consistently underperforming to the level that I feel he can play at. That I've seen him play at back in the Source days when he was in Berry Games and and early CS:GO. Um, and he's got, you know, a, a very reputable uh, player basically vouching for him. And I'm, I'm eventually that's the kind of thing that will cause resentment within the team if if somebody who's underperforming is perceived to be immune to criticism or being removed from the lineup, sometimes other players might start to get a little bit peeved about that. Well, Shox's career might be in trouble, basically, if, he's, if he tries to be permanently attached to, to Smiths. Mm. If Smiths is not delivering on a, a tier one level, then, then people will just not pick Shox, because that's a huge, because then you've got Shox in position where maybe he's, because he's not even performing. Like he's a, he's a star level player, but he's not, we're not seeing star level performances despite the no. people he's playing with. And that, that, that tends to be a characteristic of star players. They can play, Look, AZ is a good example from mm -hmm. that we can cast our minds back to recently. A very fresh memory that, despite his team underperforming, he's still able to to lift lift uh, the results as much as he possibly can, and he has knockout games all the time, even though his team aren't performing. And that's mm -hmm. not the same with shocks. So, so that's a little bit problem. That's a little bit. I, uh, I, I feel that's a recent phenomenon, and, yeah. I, and and I think this is because he's very aware of first of all his billing as a star player, but second of all people maybe looking at Smiths and going, uh, you know, as bromances go, perhaps this one is questionable. So I think he's tried to take on all this extra responsibility, such as the in-game leading, uh, which someone messaged me to say that he is still doing that. 
which um, still early early days in fairness. Yeah, of course. I'm not saying they should necessarily deviate from the, the path they're on, but it feels if you're a Titan fan, they've been on this path for a very long time indeed. And you know, you alluded to that earlier. You have to go back. What was it? Dreamhack Stockholm to really. You know, yeah, a long a long time ago. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. I hope they can fix it. They're um, everyone in that t- roster is uh, worth uh, respect as a professional, but uh, c- collectively something is is broken. And I think Titan are one of the great underachieving organizations, if I'm honest, in, in CSGO. Um, anyway, speaking of underachievements, uh, let's do a cobble giveaway. Where uh, we, you have the chance for Dragon Law, but uh, of course you don't get one. Reese, who got one? The winner is H2O Carrium. H2O Carrium. Okay, I like that name. I yeah. haven't heard of any of these subscribers before. Which is a good thing. I mean, yeah. Which yeah. is a good thing. Well, I'm watching that sign on the face, officers. It's just going up and up. <laughs> Loads of face it uses. 2.7 million at the moment. Anyway, let's open this package and let's see what treasures lie within. And it's, well, it's not a scar. It That's is good. a Mac 10. It's a good one. What's a good doodle? Hey, it's not a Navi match. No. Skadonglers. I'm, I'm really, I tried to pressure him to, to put, to sign it as Skadonglers. I think if he wrote Skadonglers instead of Skadoodle, he mm. would make bags of money from those stickers. But why, why do you think that? Because I call him Skadonglers. <laughs> but, but why would he, why would more people be inclined to buy it? Because it's like special edition. Okay. If he wrote Skadonglers, Sean Gares wrote Sean Grills. Which uh, Dan came up with. I don't think nothing can, I can write tell Kimbo that was Slice. A Dan one. Sure, sure. <laughs> no. I don't think nothing can write Kimbo Slice. No. He's, like, he's like a white Kimbo Slice with a beard, but I'm sure there's copyright issues there. Yeah, yeah, big, big time. Yeah, and um, yeah. although uh, you know Kimbo's not doing particularly well financially at the moment, I'm no. sure he'd be grateful for the even the smaller cut of the action right now. Like, it's but the boatyard's closed. Is it? Yeah, very much so. Okay. Um, he's back to beating people up at barbecues. I think. Well, um, in the good old days, as he likes to call them. Uh, but yeah, so um, look, I, I think we shall take a break. You can get back to the hammock. You can get back to sipping on your pain medication. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to have the final game of the day, which I believe is going to be Fnatic and Virtus Pro. Uh, and uh, that should be a cracker. It is the new look Fnatic, of course. So looking forward to seeing how they do against the tough opponents of the polls. We will see you very soon. <laughs> 